seems like, right? Yeah. Do you, do you have any idea why there's, there's so much resistance? Well, probably it's behind, there is no country behind this project. And probably there, because there is no, let's say, culture as it is with English or with Japanese or French. So probably this, this is what makes people feel afraid, feeling afraid. Well, I've heard people no. mention, I've interviewed so far, mention that they think there is a real culture of Esperanto, mm -hmm. and that Esperantists do things differently with each other. Um, does anyone have any example of an Esperanto culture? Well, there's quite a, bit, quite a bit of music, original music in Esperanto nowadays. And in fact, there's a company in France that produced 10 CDs during the last year of original Esperanto music. They had originally produced these compilation CDs. So it was 19 different tracks from 19 different bands. So there's that much Esperanto music out there. And every time there's an international uh, cult cultural gathering, there's this uh, kind of a, um, uh, what's the word, concorrenza? What is concorrenza? Competition. 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 <laughs> this, she's telling me my own language. It's her <laughs> She's telling me English. She doesn't oh, speak okay. English. <laughs> so a lot of times when there are international gatherings, uh, uh, cultural gatherings about Esperanto, there's a competition for which of the bands gets to play. There are that many different uh, um, modern, like rock music kind of bands. Some of them are really interesting. There's some that are just, you know, basic standard Euro pop, and that's fine. There's not got no problem with that. But the point is that there's a, an intention of mixing cultures together. So there's one of my favorite bands, actually, is a group called Kaito. They're from the Netherlands. In fact, they're from Frisia. So they play some tunes are influenced by Frisian folk music. Now, I dare you to find me another pop band in the world that influences, uh, in fact, they, they play, like, for example, uh, Bulgarian rhythms. Bulgarian rhythms and Frisian folk music together in the same genre. So it's just a wonderful kind of uh, postmodern uh, international mix. It seems so the like music, very postmodern. absolutely. In in music especially, there's also a, a fair amount of theater that happens these days. Unfortunately, there's not very much uh, film that's happened. Although I happen to be one of the uh, actors in a film series that's a 15 lesson teach yourself Esperanto series that isn't just teach yourself Esperanto. The idea is, let's get them involved in sort of a soap opera kind of a thing. There's visitors from out of town, and they start flirting with each other, and who's going to get uh, romantic involved with so-and-so, and then some money is stolen, and maybe it isn't. And so the idea is, let's create a film that's inherently interesting. And it starts off in easy Esperanto, and it moves up gradually, lesson by lesson, into more complex. So there are some films being made in the language, because there's just so much money required to make a film, that's a sort of low priority, low actualization. And I have a question about the language. But anytime you have a, a, a language that's spoken by people uh, throughout the, the world, it seems, do you ever have different groups of people introducing phrases and words that are speaking Esperanto and they come up with sort of this, in this Esperanto that has kind of a Frisian spin on it, right? And suddenly they're at a conference, and the polls are saying, "Hey, what what word is that?" I mean, how does how does the international Esperanto League or, uh, community uh, police the introduction of new phrases and new words? Anyone? They are they are very open to the new members. So always, if, even you are a beginner and you don't speak Esperanto so good, you know only a few words. They they will help to communicate with you. They they speak theory and not very speed and they are very open to the new, new members. And then and the introduction of new words to people, is there a voting process? There, there's an academy that, uh, there's an academy that uh, controls uh, the, uh, the evolution of the language, the, the vocabulary, standardization and such. Uh, and uh, it maintains it uh, pretty well, and then a uh, new vocabulary comes in. As far as uh, uh, regional phrases, well, some do come up, and, uh, and uh, some may be understood and maybe not, <laughs> but uh, usually they are pretty much controlled. Well, 
Um, Anatole says that, that there's an academy, and there is, in fact, an academy. However, it's mostly ignored. It's the same way that uh, in the French language, there's the, the Académie Française, that says you will not use words like le weekend. Everybody uses words like le weekend. Sandwich. Right, okay. right, le sandwich. There's all kinds of things like that. So there is an Academy of Esperanto. However, what really keeps it unified is more the fact that people do come together in international meetings. So if a new term is introduced, if a new spin on a particular verb happens in Japan, and then the Japanese come to the World Congress, then the people from every place else in the world say, wow, that's a, a great new word, and so it just goes out every place else. Now, it's true that sometimes words will come out, or a new usage will come out, and the academy will say, oh, but we don't like this one here, or we would prefer that. Sometimes the academy's um, statements win out, sometimes not. Right? I can't think of an example right offhand, but there are some notorious uses that the academy does not approve of that people everywhere just use. That's just the way it is. So on the one hand, yes, the academy is an important institution. But on the other hand, it is a naturally evolving language so that when new concepts come up someplace, they get into a central clearinghouse, which is the people at international meetings. And then it gets sent back out again to all over the world. So people have this weird notion that's inevitable that Esperanto will uh, fragment, will create dialects. It's inevitable that it does not. Well, it, diction, dictionaries have to yield to usage. Exactly. And if usage is widespread, uh, the academy controls the rules, the initial rules by which the language was created. And uh, so long as uh, uh, usage makes sense, and it adheres to the rules sensibly, then it must be accepted sooner or later. It uh, works uh, pretty much this way in English uh, dictionaries, in English language also. 